Okay, um, so here we go. I've got uh, Eek's Cat up here. Um, this is revision uh, 576 uh, from the um, and I'm making this video to demonstrate a little more fully than the last video I made. Um, some of the possibilities with uh, constrained sketching. Uh, maybe give some ideas to some of you are not familiar with the idea of why it's important and how useful it can be. Um, so I'm going to uh, start out here by drawing really a quite simple profile. Um, and then we're going to make it from a simple sketch that's really rough into something that's uh, exact using a constraint solver. So this is really hopefully very intuitive and working on making this better. I'm going to go ahead and enter some geometry. Um, it's not going to be exact. Um, but uh, here we go. There's, there's some geometry. Now, uh, this is obviously not exact. It won't even extrude because these two points aren't connected. It's not a close profile. Um, so we've got to do some things to make it better. Um, but we want to do this without having to do any calculations of where exactly the point is. At least not, not us as the user. Uh, the solver is going to do that for us. Um, so a couple things we want to do here um, before we get started is in the selection things, we'll make sure we can select our lines and points. And, and make sure that selected sketches is off. If, if, there's, if the selection filter for sketches on, is on, we try to select a single line and we just select the entire sketch that that line is a member of. So if we have these sketches to select, we can select individual lines and arcs and your circles, circles. So the first thing that I want to do is come here and I want to make these two points coincident uh, so that they have the same coordinates. Um, so to do that, I need to select both of these points. So here's one of them, and here's the other. I control click them to uh, to get them at the same time. So I can right click and say select coincident. So what that's done is in the background, the solver is uh, is uh, looking at the geometry, looking at the constraints, and uh, if I drag this line in its endpoint, it's going to solve for the position of this line's endpoint to uh, constrain to, to satisfy the constraints. So that's fairly simple. I'm going to add some other simple constraints, like this line. I want it to be vertical. Um, and this line, I want it to be uh, horizontal. Uh, another constraint we can have, if we select two lines, is uh, we can make them perpendicular. So these two lines are now perpendicular. I can drag them around and it's going to remain perpendicular. Now, uh, you'll notice that between this line and this arc, uh, when I drew it, we automatically have a tangent constraint being put in. Uh, that can be removed, but we're going to go ahead and leave it in for now because uh, it's actually uh, in our design intent. And uh, we want to add uh, a tangent constraint up here to this side as well. As you can see, it's not uh, constrained to be tangent, so I'll select both of them and toggle the tangent constraint, and now it actually is tangent. Okay, so now we can still drag this around and uh, get different results. Um, that's neat and everything. Um, there still are a few little bugs, um, as would be expected at this point. But we want to come in and, and make uh, make our sketch exact. So say we had a part like this, we could go and measure these dimensions, and we could uh, actually change them. So I right clicked on this line and toggled the line length constraint. So this is going to constrain the length of this line to, to that value. Um, and we look at 22 millimeters here. Uh, this base. I'm going to toggle the line length, and it's going to be uh, 60 millimeters. Um, and this side over here, we want it to be 40 millimeters. Oh, got to uh, toggle the line length constraint. So that's 40 millimeters now. And uh, I'm also going to define this radius. I'll toggle the radius now. It doesn't have a dimension shown up here, um, but I can come down here and the radius right now, and I can put in the 10 millimeters. So here's our uh, sketch so far. Um, it's fully constrained. Oh. That's nice. It's fully constrained at the moment, except for the fact that uh, we need um, to be able to put um, constrain one of these points to some ground points so that it's not moving around anymore. But the shape itself is constrained. So uh, now that we have that and it's exact, um, we can come and we can. Uh, Turn the sketch into a solid by extruding it. So maybe 15 millimeters tall. And, uh, now we have a solid. 
I'm going to change the color of the solid so that it's uh, uh, a little bit easier to uh, visualize what's going on here. Um, okay, so now we have the solid. Um, and he has some great stuff that we can come in and uh, get those. And, um, maybe, maybe uh, as an afterthought, these two features actually need to have a uh, edge blend of 9 millimeters, uh, so we can put a radius there. Um, and say that uh, we're making this on a CNC machine and we want to chamfer the top edges here, you can select the edges and uh, tell it to come and put a chamfer of 2 millimeters. And uh, then we have a nice, good looking block with a 2 millimeter chamfer on the top. Um, so hopefully that gives uh, an idea of how useful sketches can be. We don't want, especially when things get very complicated, we don't want to have to calculate uh, as a user the dimensions of points uh, for, for the end point of a, of a line or for the center point of a circle or something like that. We'd much rather have a, a solver uh, take our design intent, which we tell it through constraints, and, uh, and create geometry uh, that is correct based on those constraints. So anyhow, uh, I hope that you enjoyed this and I hope that it will be useful uh, for your own Heekscat experiences. Uh, we're looking to have some additional developers come in and help uh, work on, on Heekscat and, and add some more features, um, uh, fix some bugs, and it would be great if we could get some more support on that. Anyhow, thanks.